What was that song from the taxi? L L L L L Steppo. L L L L L Steppo. What was that even for? From the taxi in Japan. <laughs> all the all the um Yeah, but like what the product? I don't know. That was like my favorite thing to do in Japan, like whenever you'd be in the cab or whenever you have a TV on, just try to guess what the commercial actually is for. Yeah, I, like, I couldn't get it like half the time. I was trying to figure it out and then it would always surprise me in the end. They have really good jingles out there. They and do. I also realized like it gets stuck in your head. It's certain st every station or every like train station, like the the uh the city ones. All you can, have your, their you can own. put your cup down. All, they all have their own. <laughs> He's like doing oh. the reach around drink. I forgot that it said this. Um, <laughs> that every station had its own like theme song. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. My ring finger has been has been um, numb for the past three days. That's happened to me before. But for three days? Yeah. That's, that's, that I, doesn't I, I sound had good. Like, I had like two fingers go numb for like a week. And then but I started you like- you heard it though. No, just I randomly. Is it because I'm not getting enough vitamins or like magnesium Maybe. or some like what, what is circulation? It? I've had like sometimes it feels like pin, <laughs> it feels like pins and needles at the tips of my fingers. Like okay, sometimes right. it's like I can't feel that or it just feels like like I don't know like I have like thorns in them. Okay, that's what that's what it's been feeling like. I thought I had to go to the do like I was gonna wait till, for another day, but this is the other day and it's still numb. <laughs> You're okay. So I, okay, all right, so I'm good. You'll be fine. I thought it was like cancers. <laughs> Did you? See I, I thought I thought I was that, dying. That you had to. I thought I was it. dying. Did you see the TikTok about that girl who had uh, a salad that was like dressed up with like edible flowers and stuff on it, and she was eating it and she felt it like poke her cheek and she was like, "Ow, that really like hurt my cheek." Like the stem of it hurt her cheek. She kept kept feeling like it was still in there. She went to like multiple oral surgeons. They were like, "I don't know. I just feel like it's just been agitated." And then like. Three weeks later, she's like, oh whole, my a God, garden. a whole fucking like thorn comes no out way. of her cheek and it had been in there the entire time. From so they weren't salad. edible? Uh, it was just, yeah. Uh, just dish. some thorn portion of it? Yeah, oh, like a my. damn stem. And it's just, imagine having that in you and then like, oh. It's, it's, like getting a, it's like getting a fat splinter and just feeling it in there. It's like the worst feeling, so just, just knowing annoying. something. That's in. why I don't eat salads on the like, off chance that <laughs> yeah. I get a thorn in Stick there. Stick with cupcakes. You will not it, find a that's thorn what I'm saying. in cupcakes. It's Absolutely true. not. How are y'all feeling? Dude, so jet lag. It, I've had the, the worst jet lag I've ever I've, felt. I've in my never entire felt life. it before. I like everybody talks about jet lag, but I've never been like, oh, this is what that is. And I, I get it now. Like jet lag. I thought like to me, jet lag was just like, oh, you're just sleepy. You're tired from traveling. What I felt in the past couple of days was truly jet lag. Yes. I feel like I've yeah. been my whole, like I thought like, oh, I'll time it out. I'll take a nap. I'll get in sync. No, I've had weird spurts where I'll be asleep for 10 hours yeah, and then so I'm strange. up for a little bit. And I need to sleep again. And I'm getting, I'm getting weird dreams. I'm getting weird nightmares. I'm, I'm like seeing shit. Like while I'm <laughs> like, it, it's really <laughs> not like, side effects <laughs> at all. Like, no, that is, like is, I think my body's just at an all time, like low, just from the traveling and everything. Oh, I so, it's just I, I the feel, travel life. Oh, it's, right. <laughs> What's I feel foggy. Jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, right. We're complaining about. It first yeah. Time. Okay. Well, um, we have a very, very long and, um, we have a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, yeah, a lot of ground to cover. But what's the word I was about to say? Exciting. Treacherous. Ex <laughs> not exciting. It was more once. There's a lot of something. Jam packed. Jam packed. <laughs> there we, go. <laughs> we have a jam packed episode today. Um, so let's get right into the intro and let's get right into the intro. <laughs> All right, baby, let's do it. All right, in a three, in a two, in a three, two, one. It's, it's coffee tall, baby. Woo! Adi gato. Oh, oh, oh. Ow! Welcome back. We're just <laughs> Japanese the whole time. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Welcome back to Zane and Heath Unfiltered. I'm Zane. <laughs> I, I, I was ready for Matt to I say. I thought you were going to say it in Japanese. I, was I, like, I didn't like, learn that. I thought I would. What? It's like Watashi. Isn't that I? Like w Watashi? We, yeah. Watashi Zane? Watashi Zane. I may, uh, we may be so <laughs> wrong on that. I don't even want to say it. But uh, konbanwa, good evening, or Ohio, whatever time of day there you're you listening go. to this. And then I'm, oh, I'm Heath. I'm Matt. I'm Mariah. Uh, and we are on Unfilter. Thank you so much for coming to another episode. Before we start this jam packed episode, Today is, or tomorrow is going to be Heath's birthday. Woo! I love so birthday. we want to give you a special oh my little gosh. something <gasps> to start wow. the episode. Wow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, dear Keith. Happy birthday to you. Um, we decided to do cupcakes instead of a cake because we always usually eat the whole cake. So I thought it'd be smarter just to get the cupcake so we each had a little piece of cupcake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there we go. Zane, put your party hat on, huh? <laughs> He's sturdy. Okay. There we go. Making that wish. Making that nice. wish. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. That was really sweet. Um, And I, before we start, I wanted to give you a little pre-birthday gift. Do you have a present for me? Yeah, for me. Shit. It's actually in my pants. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. let me, let me uh, it save uh, it. Wait, it what? really is Ew. in your pants. Whoa! Oh, it's we got soaking wet. Yeah, it's soaking <laughs> wet. I'm a swamp ass already in the front. Um, <laughs> it's my lost JR yeah. pass. Oh gosh. <laughs> Here, Matt, film film this for me. Film okay. this for me, so I'm not filming myself. Okay. You can open it. <laughs> Come on, just take it. It's clean. Take I'm clean. It. I just showered. All right. Here we you're go. You're gonna want to see this. Yeah, you're. Gonna... <laughs> it's another trip to Japan. <laughs> 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 Oh boy, we're going. Well, well so we, we're, we're <laughs> two. Well, wait, wait. Before you get too excited, but we're not we? going to the actual. We're not going to the actual. It's like a. <laughs> so Zane, <laughs> okay, Zane. Why don't you tell us what Heath is looking at? Just uh, to clarify. So, well, why don't you read it? I think uh, you read it exactly what it says. This is the uh, Grand Prix of Long Beach. It's going to be April 14th to the 16th. Yeah. Whoa. Um, that, that's a car race, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's it's the 14th? Oh, we get to ride in them? Yep. It, it says the 14th? <laughs> is it the 4th? Girl, what, what does it say on there? The, the top of it says April 14th to 16th. Okay, that, okay. Then here it says the 4th. Okay, so we're not going, obviously, to the 14th. <laughs> we're not going to the actual race because it, we're, in, uh, we're at Coachella. We're going to the pre- Got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Fun. So this is on the 4th, the day yeah. before my birthday. Yes. Uh, we get to ride in an Indy car driven by one of the pros. Yes. Whoa. We get to hop into a pace car after and then- uh, go into formula drift cars. Whoa, Zane, very good gift. Shut Thank up, you. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Cool. Thank This is really sick. Zane, when he got the email, goes, oh, ooh. Uh, oh, I, hey, Leah, bring... pull up that Grand Prix email. <laughs> I'm like, did you just say Grand Prix? <laughs> wow, sick. It's going to be all day on April 4th. So that's fine. Hope you had nothing booked. I don't. Perfect. Thank you. Of course. That's pretty sick. Where's very your gift, cool. Matt? I just added it to my to-do list. Yeah, Get because the president didn't even realize it was his birthday for Matt, the podcast. Matt, oh, wait, so. hold Matt on. walked we, in and goes, "There's a birthday coming." Up. Yeah, oh. he goes, he goes, is it? Whose, bir whose birthday is it? He, whose birthday? <laughs> What's Mariah's? It's today. <gasps> <gasps> no, it's today. <laughs> you know what? If uh, I, <laughs> I just it's wish okay, Matt. We all forget our phones. We all had everyone's birthdays in there. I feel like back I, in the know, Facebook Matt, days, everyone knew. <laughs> also. We had a lot of really good matcha in Japan, but nothing topped the Kremota matcha. <laughs> thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. Can Matt. I just you, say Matt. that? <laughs> well, to, to, to be fair, to be fair, we do get our matcha from Japan, so it's still <laughs> Japanese matcha. It's Japanese matcha, pretty much. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it, it's it is better. It thank is. you. Really thank good. You. Again, you could go to Kremota.com and get yourself a Kremacha starter pack. You'll mm -hmm. get all the all the uh, um, you know everything to make all the all the doodads exactly. Um, <laughs> all, all the jam packs. <laughs> all the jam pack stuff in the starter pack. <laughs> <laughs> this starter pack is jam. <laughs> okay, okay right, but before we get started, yeah, let's I want to say this. I want to say thank you both of you from the bottom of my heart for the incredible experience that we had in Japan. It truly You're was welcome. one of the best gifts I've ever received. And I want to say thank you. I Take love care the, of you guys. You guys have been doing a lot for us. So, uh, but no. yeah, this is going to be a very long episode. Uh, we have a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> so girdle your loins and pump those brakes. <laughs> You're not going to want to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> or our worst we, episode. We never get into it. <laughs> it, it <laughs> we just keep stalling. I don't want to, I don't want to say it yet. Cause I feel like this is like the most exciting thing that's happened to us in a very long time. So I kind of want to drag it out. There's just so out. much ground to cover yeah yeah did we enjoy the flight experience i think it was a pretty smooth time oh, everyone I, got there on time mm -hmm. yeah we got our seats we watched our movies we ate our food and and the whole the whole airport experience i felt like was so smooth it was more smooth yeah. flying international to japan than flying to like new york so honestly okay. yes i agree i think what helped was getting there three hours early yeah 
Yeah, I mean, because normally we would show up super late and like the lines are packed. I think we like beat the traffic of most people trying to board. Yeah, and it was just like there there was no line to wait to check our bags or anything because we were there before we, everybody. But we didn't go like too early though. I felt like we still left at like a reasonable time. I just think they have to- a much better system and flow, and they're. Just much well, more considerate and I, I, that's true. I will also traveling. say one thing that helped with that was us having a separate line. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Helped a lot because oh, we had absolutely. the business class and like the other line was definitely much longer. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, but it was absolutely. it was very, very smooth. Um and then when we, we first got through, we decided to take our currency uh, and do the exchange before the flight because I was like, it's probably going to be packed by the time we get there. Like, let's just yes. get it done. Be proactive about it. And we met this lady, Lorna, who was the sweetest person in the world and was just like giving us like a bunch of like tips and pointers. But man, did it take 45 minutes to Yo, get our phone? She, she <laughs> could <laughs> chat. <laughs> she, she thought we were so funny. Yeah, we, we th- had her rolling. Thank God there, were, we, there was no line because right. imagine there was maybe three people in front of us. We wouldn't have even made our flight yeah, with an nice. hour and a half to kill. She she loves her job. Oh, but she she got us all worked up. We were in a panic the whole trip because when she gave us the money, she put it in an envelope and we were getting ready to put away. And she's like, don't fold it though. And we're like, what do you, she was like, don't, you can't fold the Japanese currency. It's like, like it has, it's to, like, be, it's like, has right. to be, like it has yeah. to be crisp or they won't accept it. So we babied this envelope <laughs> for a, literally like putting it into our backpack, sliding it. But by the end of the trip, we were like, <laughs> <laughs> it, and it, it was, it's tough though, because keeping it straight, you have to have long pockets. we got to keep it in our yeah. bag. In my head, I'm like, how are Japanese people walking around with straight crispy dollars in their pockets? Their, their pockets their are wallets. extra long. It also, like, if you, ha- it can be still on the curve of your wallet. It, it's long as it's not like folded. Oh, you see, I, like a hard crease. Right. That's where they're like, no, but it can have like a, like a bend. So to it. interesting. Well, but, yeah, I think we yeah, did a we, pretty good job. We, we we ended up like taking a little bit out at a time and putting it in the wallet and then using that and didn't have a problem anywhere. And that's a great place to start also is the, it, it was crazy how much bang for your buck you get in, I in Japan. Yeah. The, the, the drinks we bought, the food we bought, I, I could not believe, and, and it was totally unexpected. It was, was totally unexpected too, because she told us that everything was going to be very expensive there. So in our head, we I know. pulled out more cash. We're like, okay, we got to make sure it's already an expensive trip. We have to really watch out what we spend out there. She, and then she also told us everywhere was cash only. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about, it, she lied out of her ass to it. No, that was, was a big no, exaggeration look, because I hardly. It, it was a cash. big ex- exaggeration, but there were uh, there were quite a. Uh, it, it was like going to Mexico. There, there's a lot of places that don't yeah. take cars; they take cash. So we. We just like prepared. We prepared it was it was work. nice to have the cash. Yeah, it was yeah. nice. And then we get on our giant giant plane. Have you, I've never seen a bigger plane than the plane that we were in. Yeah, yeah it was have you seen massive. a bigger plane? Yeah. It was huge. The engine was next to me. I was so scared. <laughs> One little thing. That big ass engine was right next to my face. I was so scared. I <laughs> but I do. I did get pretty scared on that flight. Whenever I'm flying over massive bodies of water, it is, like yeah, that's it is where I'm scary. like. Oh my God! There is nothing. I, I felt much us. more safe in a, in a big plane than I do in a little plane. Oh, though. absolutely! I you, feel like if we go down, at least I've got like more cushion. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I but I also would rather like crash land in the body of water than I would land, rather do water. Right? Than land I, too. I, that just seems like uh, I'm land all day. No, because land, I feel like you're dead. Water, there's a little. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can you can you add to that? I just okay. deal with water, the panic there's of a little every... bit of flex. Think think, yeah. think about when the plane's going down though. The the first thing they do is look for a piece of land to, <laughs> like to land on because if you go down in the middle of the water it's like then what you take the the slide in the boat and then what <laughs> <laughs> like, the Titan- dude, like, the like the It'll titanic like the titanic be a while though out in the middle of the pacific ocean Ooh. for anybody oh, to no, come you would, get you oh no you would you would like you wouldn't no. make it i guess i'm no just way. i guess i'm just com- comparing it to the guy that Landed in the Hudson and everybody oh, hey. survived. Nice. It's all right. It's all right. Wait, did a balloon pop? No, no. It, it just floated <laughs> away. Ugh. We all float down here, Johnny. I've I've always wanted to be. I don't want to jinx myself, but in an experience where you get to see everybody rush off of a plane at once and try to get through one door, I w- like or a bus. So I want to. You want you want to do that? Not that I want to. I just want to see how everybody reacts in that situation and how quickly and proficiently everybody. Oh gets no! Off. I Not think good. in the moment, I think it'd be I, a chaos. I think it's every man for themselves. 
elbowing people and just like Absolutely. pushing. Every, I, I, every man for themselves, as in like you, like whoever you're with, whoever you're traveling with, that's your main priority. Yeah. Fuck everybody else. Somebody, I, I just, somebody needs help behind you getting out of the seatbelt. We got our babies. Let's go. <laughs> you got, you that's got like to go. The duty of the flight attendants is to maintain true, a sense yeah. of order and calm yeah. amongst their passengers. And it's crazy how they will stay calm until their demise. <laughs> Jesus. No, seriously, like, like listening to like those, um, it's crazy how they all really keep their calm yeah. until the end. I think that's like they crazy strength and yeah. bravery to like be in that state. So oh. we, so we land. Hold on, no, we oh, got, we got. Still on, <laughs> oh, we did, we, we, we did we a whole, we did a whole. We, we thing. got a whole breakdown. We went day by day to make sure we, we didn't did a miss whole okay, breakdown. Okay. We did I, whole oh, motherfucking brand, I, I I did like on the plane though that you could choose between the different cuisines. You could either get started and go Japanese cuisine or international cuisine. Like on the way there, I went I went international. They, I they looked the same. I wasn't me. ready. Oh, and no Wi Fi. So if you're flying to Japan, just be prepared well, for no Wi Fi. The they had trip. it, and we all paid for it, and it went <laughs> out in five minutes. <laughs> it was like twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, no refund. You can't. I think you can still say that you didn't get any Wi-Fi, and they we did down though. You. Oh, you did. Yeah, because every five minutes we uh, when they walk by, hey, the <laughs> Wi-Fi's out. Oh no, but I think if you email the place, like I've done that on American Airlines. Flights. Oh, to, it, I think when the Wi-Fi is out, they should just refund everybody. Refund everybody that bought the Wi-Fi. Yeah, like true. immediately. Like you sh they shouldn't have to wait for you to to like email. Yeah, you. That's I just they, think that's like should, bad they customer service. That it was yeah. Off. but yeah. But like, no, I feel like everything was pretty good. We landed, we got to the airport, and the first thing we noticed as we're we were walking through the airport are these yellow lines that I hated. Hated. Did you, did you notice that too, or did it piss you off on as the much ground? As on the ground, those yellow ridges. Yeah, and you have to literally. Ridge, Why ridges and what? bumps. Yeah. What What is the purpose of those yellow lines? So he, is it for blind? Are blind? These, that's what I always thought. He thought it was for rolling I bags. I thought it was either for the blind or like to keep your bags from rolling away. I think it's blind because it's on like a path. Like it looks like a yellow br brick road. So you're, it's leading you to the right spot. It, but no, because everything was square. Like it's not really. I thought it was like, or it was pedestrian flow of traffic. They want you to stay in this area and not be on this side. Like they almost were navigating us around. Like maybe it. we weren't supposed to cross over yeah. it. Yeah. But at first we we didn't know, we didn't know the system. So we yeah. were just rolling through it every like yellow. Hard, what a hard. <laughs> it was like going off road. We needed like a suspension on the bottom of these suitcases. But not until like the end of the trip, we finally realized that there's little gaps that yeah. have like the circular bumps. Wait, those are can, worse. No, no, those are easy. You could easily go over those. And I realized that like, you're supposed to be like going in those to keep the traffic. In yellow rubber ridges floor Japan. Type it in. But like after the trip, I still didn't really oh, understand wait, raise, how uh, it That's helps. it. That's the first article right there. Okay. In Japan, yellow raised groove lines are a form of street braille to help the blind. It's oh, help oh the blind. I feel like an asshole now. Oh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, it messed my suitcase. Honestly, I th I think it's amazing. And I, <laughs> I've never, I, and I, and I think honestly, it's the smart ingenuity. Too. <laughs> we have that in America, usually at like ends of uh, crosswalks, just not in the middle of the sidewalk guiding you all the way through. Uh, guys, honestly, I didn't notice that anywhere else but the airport or the yeah, train no, stations. It was. Oh yeah, it was I, everywhere. Oh, I didn't even notice this that. This could be stupid, but I wonder if the blind rate is higher in Japan because it was ev in the hotels, yeah. on the streets, it was everywhere. Even in front of the elevator, they had the- Right, they right, had the right. Like little headings. random spots because we have them at intersections on the sidewalk yeah. when, like to stop if the street is there. It's And maybe we'll have it on the elevator, like the braille, but this was, Everywhere, restaurants. I think they just bars. go above and beyond. beyond. Yeah, I think yeah. they're just very inclusive. Very accommodating. Yeah, that's the For thing anybody. about Japan is they had figured out like every problem and, and like had a solution tracks, yeah. to yes. it. Everything down from like the 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 guardrails that would go up and down before you would board that trains. That was the best. Um, the uh, umbrella things that you would stick it because you would stick your umbrella in a thing that would put a cover on the umbrella. I love that. It. I love it was like, that. And I loved it when it dried your yes. umbrella too. Uh, no, there's there was two it's different ones that they had. It's such a simple thing, but you're, when you finally use it, you're like, wow, every place could use one and of And the these. fact that it was it's at so every single store. It's so easy. Yeah. Genius. It's, it's like, genius. I don't know why New York hasn't done it. New York, that's like the second. Because, because they don't know how they filthy. would make money off of it. <laughs> yeah. Everything is yeah. made for profit in America. Like I know. I noticed Japan of, is all about the people. Yeah, that's They're true. all about protecting each other and mm -hmm. keeping their city clean and they're proud. What was so wild. So the moment like we landed, we get out in the city and we see it in its full. 
It is crazy for being the most populated city in the world and you do not hear anybody honking their horn. Not crazy. None. <clears throat> there, not once. Matt, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think I heard it maybe twice the entire time we were there. There's and no it, honk. It, it was just our um, our one driver going through that. Skinny, oh yeah. Skinny little aisle. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. But dude, it's it, it's really like it's because everybody respects each other out yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it's that easy. Yeah. There's such like a decency and also just a level of just quietness among like the people too. Yeah. yeah. And and you know what we I think we all learned how to just be a little quieter throughout the whole trip too. Yeah, I, definitely coming out of it, I feel like I've I noticed a lot of things that we could change about ourselves, oh. especially in public. Yes. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this podcast, ZocDoc. You've been suing about a health problem you have. You almost resort to texting your group chat to get your friends' opinions. You're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat, but you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Exactly. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and scheduled just right. All you got to do is go to ZocDoc.com slash Zane and Heath and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today and many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash Zane and Heath. ZocDoc dot com slash Zane and Heath. Thank you so much, ZocDoc, for sponsoring this podcast. We love you. Everybody there is Japanese. Like th we didn't see anybody else out there. I probably saw a few Americans walking around. Yeah. But I like, like I 90, saw a lot in Tokyo, dude. Not, I feel like ninety nine percent of the people I saw around there were. Yeah. 100% Japanese. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like a mo it's monoculturalism like yeah. out there. Like we we're from America. We're a country made up of other countries out there. Exactly. Like, that's why like Japan is just so Japanese. Yeah, like, it truly and how is that. Clean. Yeah, as soon as we as soon as we got off that first train when we got into uh, Shinjuku, walking through that train station was spotless. Yeah, like, I could have licked the floor. Comparing that to like being in New York, it was. There was no smells. And yeah. Which is wild how clean it was, but there's no trash cans hardly None. anywhere. anywhere. You, in Japan, you have to be prepared that you're gonna have a bag of like just trash. I, I didn't yeah. wait till you get home. We heard about no trash cans and I expected it going into it. And I was like, this is gonna be fun. Like everybody is responsible for their, for own, their own trash. trash. I was like, this is cool. And I, like the first few days I was like, you know, I, I got empty bottles in my backpack. I'll toss it out when I see it. But then it got to the point where I was like, I need a trash can. Like, yeah. I got to unload. So like, it was very few but, and far but you, between. But like, because you, I, I feel like the reason why nobody has that problem ever is because when people, when people buy a drink, they drink it right there and then, and then they throw it in the trash. Yes. They're not yeah, walking around, around with around drinking. With it, yeah. That was yeah. like a big rule is you realized you would never, never see anybody walking around eating something. Like it's a freaking yeah. carnival. If anybody bought something they're go, they go over and like hover in the corner yeah. and eat. And another thing, and there were no hoodlums like anywhere. No, there was, wow, there, yeah. I was no like, where, where are this? But it was like also home. Yeah, homelessness, hardly any out there. Yeah. And if you saw a homeless person, they kept it tidy and neat. Oh, Unbelievable. We saw a when homeless we saw man under this tunnel. He was mopping his ground. Yeah. Mop with a swiffer. His, his whole area was, he had a blanket down and then he had like a pad on top of it. But like, it looked like he had tidy. OCD, like how tidy it was. It was perfectly placed. He was on top of it. He had his drinks lined up next to him on the side, labels facing outward, like super clean. And then there was another one down there mopping the area, <laughs> like cleaning it up. I was like, this is incredible. He kept his space cleaner than most people I've seen in, in a house. Yes. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was unbelievable. Was it I remember I was walking by that and we couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was insane. And but it just added to just everybody just being on the same page and being clean and being just respectful. Just self-respect and yeah. respect for very eye-opening. And then, you know, yeah, there was hardly any homeless, but like I also never felt like sketched out anywhere. I was never. expecting like turning around somewhere and being like, all right, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Like these people like this, there was, I never felt like anybody had like evil energy. Like no, I was never. just like, where, yeah. where's and that's, the fear? And, and that's kind of scary. Every time you go to any new country, you just always think, I, like I know I always yeah. think about that. When it, you think the worst. I yeah. don't know. like. 
what, what if we go to a sketchy neighborhood? What like what are like the? Yeah. Uh, I like, don't want to say the word gangs, but like every place has like yeah. a group of just bad people that like want. It, yeah. And you just never know if you're gonna be in that area or you're gonna run into those t- type of people. I watch a lot of movies too. Oh yeah. So, and I love those movies, so I think I like always think about that shit. <laughs> always think of the think of the worst. I you, truly you felt like I could have slept on the floor. Like yeah. I really, like could have just. That's why people do it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There you was, don't hear people talking about like, hey, when you go to Japan, be careful. Watch out for pickpocketers. Keep yeah. your bag closed. Yes. Yes. You didn't have to worry about anything no. like that. I felt safe everywhere. I noticed I saw a lot of kids walking around without their parents. Like we, there was a, like a little the girl friends. on the train. And I saw on TikTok, somebody was talking about how kids just go to and from the big city. And it used to be like that in Manhattan, like way back in the day. But of course you would never do that now. But they they say that the citizens of Japan they feel like it's their job to protect children. Yeah. So people just let their kids roam. They take the wow. the subway by themselves. They walk around like the main part of the city, and they're fine. What is what a breath of fresh air knowing that you can trust your like community and exactly. your people around you. Exactly. Exactly. Here it's, it's like awesome. every man for himself, or like we, what can I get out of you? We were just talking about every man for himself on the flight. If it went down. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Where's the sense? We need to be more like that. I know. I I truly wish, I wish everybody in America could go to Japan and just like, it it kind of makes you feel a little scummy. Like we're like, they're perfect. Oh my God. And and, and, they're so nice. And another thing I noticed too, that the way they treat foreigners, any, anybody that's like, oh my gosh, the the amount of patience, the patience, the, the patience is Unbelievable. Like you could have picked, we weren't stop. afraid to ask questions to anybody. We could have picked anybody on the street and they would have walked with us. They treat you like a guest in your house. Like they yes. treat Japan as their house and it's a, a and guest everybody was in. so kind. And you also don't feel like almost like a touristy sheep being yes. in, in Japan. A lot of the big countries and big destinations where a lot of people will go visit, like uh Paris, Rome, and everything, those are all big like touristy destinations where like the moment you get off, you are trying they the city is almost catering you. you yeah. Being like, yeah, hey, there was no you're selling. here. You you're here to come do these things. It was very just like welcome. You're now part of you're the flow. You're a part of the family. You're yeah. part of the flow here. Get with it. And you feel like you get to discover almost Japan on your own yeah. rather than it just being force fed down. Like yeah. you're giving kind of the drive through tourist experience. Yeah. That's what was so beautiful, I think, too, about and, it. And then it made you realize how how we treat them so much differently in America. I feel like when foreign people come here, nobody wants to just give them the time of day. Nobody has the patience. Nobody yeah. wants to help them yeah. out. If Because, you know, you'll see them on the street and, like, you know, the, 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 such a big language barrier. And a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people just don't even want to, like, take the time yeah. to help them. And it made me realize how much we don't actually help foreign people. I know. Just with just simple shit, just simple I think shit around. The biggest two words I heard coming out of everybody's mouth was "I'm sorry" and "thank you" the yeah. entire time. That was us because that's all we knew. <laughs> no, <laughs> but like if yeah. they thought they if if we asked them a question and they didn't have an answer immediately and they were helping us figure it out, they'd be like, "I'm so sorry, I'm gonna help you. I'm so sorry, I'm so." And we're like, "Like it, like it was it's their okay. fault." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember when we went into that big camera in the in the I, which one? I, I know the one. The one that was, we were the first people to walk in it. And we entered the department store. Oh, yes. And all of the the greeters were in their section. It was like they had just opened up the store for us. Yeah. Yeah. Every, and we walked by and everyone bowed. It was like we walked into like the the temple. Like it, it, it was just- the amount of respect that they had us walking through that, it yeah. was- They were all like, so it was like different individual stores within the department store. And they were just standing right at the front of their own section and just like welcoming as we would walk by, just everybody greeting you. And it was just like such a great start to the trip. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That was then, the first place we went to pretty much. And while you're while you're the first one at Dillard's or Bloomingdale, they're just like- <laughs> 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 but it was such a crazy difference uh, seeing yeah. that. It was like a nobility to everybody's profession in Japan. Like if you're a car driver, like you are the best car driver yes. out there. In America, it's like, oh, it, like driving a car is a side hustle out here. Yes. Like, yeah. Everything's they're, like they're a side proud. job. Everyone takes yeah. pride in their job yes. and what they do. Well, Which is also amazing because there is no tipping. Yeah. And they still go above and beyond for All you. All we wanted Even, to do was like, give a tip. Like they're not fighting for a tip and like being really 
accommodating to get a tip. They're just doing it because it's their job and they're and, proud. And, and we were wondering if, it, like, because tip apparently tipping is like disrespectful. It's it's, yeah. it's kind of like a low thing to do in their eyes. I believe. I think that's what yeah, I read. It, yeah. But I but Heath and I were wondering if you did want to give. T is it more the just the. Ugh. It seems like you're doing is a lot of charity. Like, like, a cha yeah. like, is it charity? It's almost like you're telling them, oh, they need the money. Like, yeah. oh, you could use this. That's right? what they feel. I feel like yes. that's what they feel like. So, so they must be. They must all be getting paid extremely, just um, decent. Enough. Where like enough, enough where they they yeah. need they can pay their bills. Well, it's and pay not for like their it's not like a a waitress or a waiter out here that gets paid below minimum wage. Then works on tips. And then have and to work, works yeah. on tips. Their their salary is normal out there and they don't depend on the tips yeah you know right. exactly um, but what's really interesting our friend out there told us about like people who work at mcdonald's like that's not frowned upon out there yeah no. like if they go through like an insane rigorous training to be able to work at mcdonald's and if you have that on your resume people see that and they're like wow you worked at mcdonald's you passed like you you went through the test to do that. Like it's a really good look. And, and I like that. I like that. Like for every job, it's like, it's meaning like it's, a, it's still a job. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's how they treat it. So Whether, cool. And, and all, what else that was interesting is like the cabs out there were like some, some were like new, some were old, but they were in the best condition. Yes. They had automatic ever. doors. Automatic doors was insane to me. I don't get how the top of the line Rolls Royce out here has an automatic door that opens with a push button and closes with a button, but their baseline like taxis 90s. out there, <laughs> just box taxis. And it's yeah. and it's and you realize how convenient that automatic door is. Yeah. It, so nice. Yeah. It makes it it makes it so much quicker to to get people out and in. Like it also I spread less like, germs and stuff. Exactly. Too. And I feel like they're actually able to do more rides like probably like four to five more rides a day yeah with those automatic doors just yeah. because it's also like very inviting too it's like you pull, you pull up yeah you boom the door window open. down if you're available to pick that person up boom that door opens it's like so right easy. there invitation I, I loved the taxi system out there Me i too. thought it was i the, thought it was so much fun just you get in all the taxis all the seats are lined in this beautiful white lace uh -huh. and you're just like wow this is nice up on the dash like in the roof is an air quality meter <laughs> that shows you how good the air quality is. Whew. The guy's driving with one glove and you're just like, bro, what, I, I felt like I was a James Bond in the back seat. You no, know, what you yeah. felt was dirty as fuck. I felt dirty going in that because I was like, oh, okay, I know. I this was taxi, like, I don't qualify for this. Normally taxis are dirty. You go to New York, that, disgusting. Yeah. Like, you, you see gum in the seat and all. This one, they washed, I think they removed their, car, their seats every day <laughs> yeah. and pressure wash it because it felt, and it smelled, did you smell every, Everything seat? smelled good. It smelled like cherry blossom. <laughs> it just smelled so good. I and know. When even like, dude, even when people like just i just felt i just feel like their sweat smells beautiful <laughs> like they, they, i didn't feel one stink know, in the nobody air smelled yeah not one <laughs> whiff of bad air. nobody nobody had body odor no. i think the only the only whiff of air that we got was bad when i farted in the in the hotel room <laughs> like, like swear to god th these people don't fart they don't I I had to get used to. I kept forgetting to put the money in that little tray. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought that I, was the coolest I, thing. Yes. I yeah. was so like, oops, I'm you, sorry. You don't yes. give them the money directly to their hands. They a put a tray, tray. You put the money in the tray, and then they grab the tray. And what did what did Shoda say exactly? Why? Because it's 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 you put the you put the dollar amount higher. It, what was it that he said exactly? Why they don't. You don't uh, hand dollars exact uh, straight to their hand. You have to put it down because it's like a form of oh, well, like that, etiquette. Or? Well, that's another thing too. Um, like if there's a respect in the way you talk to somebody that's older than you, it's like a respect your elder type thing. And also, it's more and, I think and successful. And it's, and it's too. like in business and somebody who holds more power than you, you do things at a sign of respect. So if you were to meet um, Jeff Bezos. Uh, whoever, somebody or, or like a to big, us, Matt, like right. you to us. So yeah. and business, huh? <laughs> business card culture out there. If I was going to give my card to Jeff Bezos, I would do it lower, and he would give it higher. What? Oh. As a sign of like respect, like I know where I like where I am so in this you, conversation. I know where right. I stand. You would yeah. give it. You would present it in a, a lower manner. But and then you could also there's like ways of showing disrespect on purpose. Like if you were going to do business and you were equal and you wanted to assert dominance you would give it higher on purpose to be like, I am. This is a place to put your cash to pay without having to directly touch the other person and causing any 
awkward a- atmosphere. Ooh, like hand to hand. Like maybe it's like an like, awkward, like, yeah. Huh. Intimate. Oh, they I, don't was want to be I, I was hitting my cash with like the coins on top and my coins fell over and then went into my drink. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> and that's yeah. why they yeah, have the yeah, tray. Yeah. Oh, when I was at Big Camera, so Big Camera was basically, I think about it like a mega department store that has fucking everything, everything from like it's technology Buy, Publix, to like clocks, a- everything. To, and I wanted to go see the toilets because I, I just heard like if you go to like a section where they sell toilets, Toilets, yeah. That there's like so many different types. You can see all the different types of bidets. And I was like, can I go see other uh, toilets? The toilets. I want to see the toilets. Yeah. The woman walked me right to the bathroom. <laughs> and I was like, no, the toilets. And all the employees thought it was so funny that I, <laughs> yeah. that I like, I was purposely asking to see the toilets. And, and it's 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 cute because because they find a lot of things funny. They reminded me yeah. of me because I find a lot of things funny. Yeah. And I felt like they found everything they funny. They thought we were so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think just like, they just find the joy in everything. Yeah, and that's they why they just, just la- are laughing. Ha- genuinely happier. Yeah. I could be there for a very long time. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't that probably be- make a lot of friends out there, but I think just like being in that atmosphere, it just felt so nice. And I feel like you'd probably become a better person being there for a yeah. good oh, amount yeah. of time. You did become better people. I know, like I one so. week was like not enough to see it. Like there's oh. so much more. Oh yeah, that uh, big, big, uh, t- like not a tip, but like, um, if you're going to Japan, you definitely have to like, minimum two weeks. Just Do not go for a week. It's not gonna be it's your last enough. time going to Japan. I, I yeah. already wanna go back so bad. Yeah. Same. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this podcast, HelloFresh. If you don't know what HelloFresh is, HelloFresh is a food delivery service where you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Good food is just too precious to waste, and HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients cut down on your food waste by at least 23% compared to grocery shopping, which is good for your wallet and the environment. Spend less time in the kitchen with quick and easy meals like HelloFresh's fast and fresh pineapple chicken tacos or falafel power bowls ready in 15 minutes or less. And HelloFresh is going to keep your taste buds on their toes with 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from every week. And with so much variety, there are options for everybody and every lifestyle. And no worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen, just like me, HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. And the best part about HelloFresh is that you get to try something new every week and cook something you never thought you would have and it's honestly so easy and fun and you just get to you, you feel really accomplished when you finish your meal and the best part about it is that you're getting all the vegetables and everything you're eating at peak ripeness because they travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days so you know they're fresh so if you want to start eating good all you got to do is go to hellofresh.com slash unfiltered 50 and use code unfiltered 50 for 50 percent off plus your first box ships for free again one more time go to hellofresh.com slash unfiltered 50 and use code unfiltered 50 for 50 percent off plus your first box ships free thank you hellofresh for sponsoring this podcast we love you and thank you for being america's number one meal kit i, I was gonna try to go the, by the timeline because the timeline is just so funny yeah, of yeah our yeah. whole trip that um so, because i know that the first night we got back to the hotel right we, we, we checked into the hotel and then we went out on a uh ichiran ramen run oh, because, because matt really wanted to go there it which was like ichiran first- there's like two in the united states there's like one i think in brooklyn and one in midtown but like ichiran is like their quintessential like top tier main chain of ramen that's like won all of like the the awards in everything uh, it's the most perfected oh. recipe just delicious. And they have it like in like tiny little booths, each one. Yeah. They you, want you get you like to, a cubby. You want you, they want you to focus on the taste. Yeah. And, and so, and that was like our very first like place yeah. that we ate at, right? So, right. So we were like, we didn't know what to expect going in. There was like, are we going to get seated or we're going to have to. And so we walk in, it's, it, you know, it's really tiny. There's two um, machines. And I remember we were having such a hard time picking oh. what to eat because they only, they only had one ramen pretty much but we were so confused it was like, the options were like traditional or classic and i was like what's the difference but, but Wait, the i went to matt i was same. like matt what's the difference he goes well one's traditional and one's classic <laughs> well i realized it was just I was because like, Thank you so much. the traditional one that added four more extra things of pork and then two things of seaweed and and, and that's what uh, i noticed too and i, was, and I told her i was like right there's just four extra <laughs> things and i she didn't get it because it really it's crazy that there's two <laughs> different dishes one yeah. just has four more ingredients yeah, in it yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. oh why don't they just have one where you just make and your the, own the every pictures time. were the same yeah so we're- well, the, that was just the like american the- one though it's like they don't have the machine they just have that one card and they give it to you 
Like oh, where you so you pick what you want, and then they also give you like a piece of paper, and you circle like uh, your spice level if you want to add yes. um, any extra ingredients or if how thick you want the noodles, like like the texture. On the sheet of paper where we circled our uh, shit, I was so scared. Was anybody going exactly the outline? Because oh to yeah, me, they had the recommended. I, I felt like if I didn't do the outline, they just yeah, weren't going to yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> they they had gonna- it recommended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really cool because you you get your own like little cubby thing, and, and you don't see your server; they don't see you. It's yeah, there's the little uh, like little blind, like a blind. Yeah, that comes down, and you just see like their legs walking back behind. I, I, there. I felt like, I felt like I was on an episode of the Powerpuff Girls with that that tall lady with the short hair. <laughs> oh, right. Just I just felt like it was just like I wanted to see oh, their face, and you couldn't see their. I face. felt like I was taking a spelling test. Yeah, because like, oh, yeah, like and it was really, and it was such a it was such a, a crazy first dining experience because we. We weren't even looking at each other. We weren't re- even really talking. We oh were my god! Kind of just enjoying the atmosphere. <laughs> Same you know, with the egg. You know how you can get a side of a hard-boiled egg? Yes. I started like rolling mine to crack it, and I was like, it would like the shell was just really hard, and I was like pushing to like get it to roll and crack and i was like zane did you crack your egg yet it's really hard and he was like no not yet and he took it on the side like you would crack a normal egg and st- like a went, raw egg like a raw egg to like <laughs> look at first i thought it was a I, it was i knew it was a boiled egg right but when thing, i saw yeah. him saying it's really hard to crack this egg in my head <laughs> you were like, Maybe I'm putting cr- it in the i was soup, like oh yeah. okay i guess because there's times where you crack an egg and it just cooks right, in yeah, your ramen yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what i <laughs> thought oh, it was my gosh so i was I was like, God damn, this is hard. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and I was like, we got it, baby. I crack it. <laughs> two, pieces. <laughs> <laughs> two pieces. <laughs> two pieces. Very, but yeah, that was good. a really interesting experience. Also, what I really thought was different too is they don't want, uh, they want you to be able to, um, ask for things without, without having to actually talk. So they, they had these like tabs yes. on the side where if somebody in the restaurant was being loud and just like, you know, being like disrespectful, you take that, it's too loud in your tab. And you it's just noisy. Put it, yeah. It's noisy. You just put it there and then that person will take care of it without But I wonder knowing. what they would do. We should have done it to see what they would have done. I wonder if anybody called on us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're, pre- I think we are being pretty quiet. Yeah. I think it's also, it, it tells the staff to quiet down because after the, every order, they all do that like chant. Like they all go like, ah, da, 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 da. like oh, like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear oh, that. Oh yeah, they say, they like, it's almost like, Fucking, it's uh, like old stone creamery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? oh, we, I, we definitely, yeah, we didn't get that the whole time. Yeah, we, we couldn't hear over it. your cracking of the egg. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but it, yeah. it was really good, and then I ended up getting a. It was like a matcha <gasps> flan. Yes, that, that was, was so banging. Good. Ooh, and then it had like a, you know, the uh, the strudels uh-huh. back in the day. It had like a strudel icing type thing Ooh. that you would pour on top of it. Oh man, it was delicious. Oh, one thing. I heard no slurping yeah. eating them because I was so excited to hear everybody slurping while eating no- noodles because apparently it's like a sign of respect when you're like really loud slurping your noodles. You mean, oh. Yeah, they and they, I didn't hear it. I'm, I, it's supposed to mean that like it's, it's really, really good. good. You're enjoying it, like so. Was no, just food. no one enjoying their noodles? I wonder if it's like China. I, I wonder also, if it's somewhere different. Maybe I don't maybe. picture Japanese people doing that. Yeah, I don't either because they, I feel like they're like because they're so respectful. Well, you say, know where I read that. Where? In my agenda book in high school, the little fun fact oh. in the agenda book, that's where I read it. I, I, saw, I saw it from a Japanese yeah. girl on TikTok. So that's why I was like, oh, okay, it's still happening then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people are just like, damn, I thought she's so loud. Too. Maybe, it, maybe it's more like in the privacy of your own home. Like, Maybe. like, I don't know. Who knows? We don't need to like. But, but no, but I'm no. I'm saying it could have. It could be something where, like, if somebody were to make a TikTok for Japan, like, are you coming to America? Make sure you do this. Yeah. And it's something that none yeah. of us actually right, do. Right, right, right. It could be something like one that. one thing too. though. I did love, and it made me as like an American just feel disgusting. It's just the the bidets out there. The level of the toilets of, of every oh God. single like, toilet was hot. Was yes. heated every, and bidets. Every single one. You could be at like a little. A, like a, a little potty. hole in the wall bar. <laughs> and it was heated. S- seats heated. A Toto a toilet seat right there. It makes me want to invest like, you know, I like my tushy, but now I'm like, let's get a big upgrade. On yeah. That. I want a Toto. And w- okay, I did it. I did it and I didn't like it. What? The you bidet? Like what? I did it one time. Wait. Not that it like... I, I get the whole cleaning part, but I did it. And then I went to wipe after and my hand just went right through my toilet paper because my ass was soaked. Well, maybe like the what? the the wh- the toilet paper was like really- Yeah, the toilet their toilet paper is actually pretty thin I, that I've noticed. It's And I was like, like, well, now I made even more of a mess. 
I, I did you, I kind of do mine like a ball at when it's you gotta wet. You got to use a little and bit so more. Then, like you use, you make it like a ball, not like more the sheet form. Cause like if a ball, it's like multi-textured mm. kind of. And so there's more grooves well, for Heath it. Heath was like, being environmentally friendly and he was only using one sheet at a time. Right, right. I, I do pretty well with toilet paper. But it's wild how custom is, customary it is to have a toilet that does have a bidet on it. Like in America, it is so rare. Everyone is yeah. walking around. One. Everyone's walking around with poopy butts all the time. <laughs> hey, not if you wipe well. Still, you, you know what? You know what I do? Poop on your hand. You would want to wash it under a sink rather oh, than just, just getting a dry towel. Being like, it's clean. Like, huh? Like wet wipes. Sure, sure, exactly. But wet wipes is a form of like cleanliness, obviously. But like wet wipes, they can't have that like in every bathroom. It's like fresh wet wipes. So I, have usually, I usually paper. just grab the, I, I put it under the faucet mm. and then I do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. But then like when it gets through and then <laughs> then I just like kind of like, you know, I just kind of like. This did you, did you ever have to, the whole, entire time you were there, had to use one of the toilets that was like in the ground? No, uh, no I only saw God. one. I saw one too. Heath and I saw one, but Patricia <laughs> had to go pee in one and she was like, Phew. Oh yeah. You <laughs> like just a, like squat, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, one no. time I had to do an 11 on number two in one of those toilets. Number oh, two? No. Not fun. Just, just. <laughs> oh man. That, well, I mean, that's me anytime if I have an emergency, cause I don't use the, like, I don't go to the bathroom. So what is it? is it? Is it? Are you like shy? Is it like kind of poop shy? Or I just you, think it's disgusting to sit on any toilet. Yeah. Even, Why don't you put toilet paper I, on the seat? Doesn't help. My brother's it's the same disgusting. way. My brother's never went in public. Is it because like like you're you just don't want to do it in like in a public place? I think I think it's a mix of everything. I think it's gross. Like first of all, if I got a splashback in a public restroom, <laughs> I think right then and there I would blow my brains out. Well, you I, know how to avoid a. A backsplash, Somet right? Sometimes it doesn't work. How do you avoid it? I, every time I go to the bathroom, even put here, I put toilet it. paper down before I... A splash bag, meaning like if, if it, 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 it dunks and then the water but goes. How do you put toilet paper to prevent... It? You put toilet paper on the on water. On the surface. On the water before you go, so it cradles, it catches it down. It catches it like a... Like a Like net. a dumpling. I've never thought about like that. They, they yeah. should do that before the plane crashes in the water. Just yes. A, a big drop in that. A big shoot. That, I mean, that's smaller, <laughs> but, I think. But sometimes it'll rip right through. And for some reason, that water is so much faster than your sphincter. Oh, it is like, just it so, just, it's just so cold, right, too. Right back up. <laughs> it's like the Titanic. Shiver me timber. Shiver. <laughs> it's disgusting. I had I, I had to remember how to do a big dookie in the um. In the, <laughs> right. All right. It, it was, all right. It was, it was okay. like people okay. are here to hear about like Japan. Night, it was like the one of like, you know the like those big places where you go get coffee and like everyone's studying. So I had to a I coffee really, shop. I really had to go. Oh no, yeah. It was more than a coffee shop. It was more like it Pastries. felt like a study hall. It was a giant study hall. You saw college kids everywhere. They're all studying. Ran into this place, right? And I was like, I gotta go or I'm doing it on the sidewalk. So I run into this place. And I'm like, oh God. I go upstairs filled with college students, right? <laughs> one bathroom, one bathroom and there's a line, right? So like whoever is in front, you just gotta make sure you're quick because someone behind you has got oh, to go. Oh no. And I'm waiting in line. I'm like, oh my God, I really have to go by. I don't want all these Japanese people here. They're all gonna laugh at me. I'm getting laughed at already. <laughs> And I don't want to be, I just don't want to be the laughing stock of this entire place. So I am, I, I'm in there and I'm trying to hurry up and I just, I hear laughing outside and it just like, it triggered me. I did, that's what happened to right, me in right, middle right, school. Right. I'd poop uh -huh. a lot in the stall and they'd look in the hole. You also know how laugh. long, how long Zane takes to go to the bathroom. Oh, we know. But, no, wait, but when I'm trying to rush, I can be out of there in 15 seconds, but this was bad. <laughs> this was bad. This sure. was four days of just Built. You know, build up. And I and they were laughing the whole time and he get out and they were they were banging fucking. on the door for him to hurry up. <laughs> oh yeah. Dun, dun, dun. They knew I was in there. You know, usually we don't like knock on the door when we know someone's in there. Yeah. They don't oh, give no. a fuck. You know what else Blunt. I noticed about the bathrooms? Another simple issue that they solved. Floor to ceiling doors and no cracks. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. much privacy. Yeah, because it's weird. Because it's weird. <laughs> I think they still have it because there's perverts and creeps exactly. that like go that in those stalls. They're building these restrooms. It's just it's disgusting. And the Wait. heated seats, you realize, make such a difference from like making your body in a relaxed like, state relaxed. to go. Like I didn't <laughs> have to. Because usually when you sit down, you're like, okay, gotta think. 
and now it's happening. <laughs> right when you're already there on the warm seat, you're like, and here it comes. <laughs> it just like your body Maybe was like, we're safe. Spe- it just speeds up the process, I guess. It's yeah. like the automatic doors. Honestly, I think they probably tested it where they saw that people use the bathroom faster. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. know we want to stay in order, but we do have a bathroom story. We might as well just jump to it. Oh my God, oh. this was, <laughs> yeah, let's just, oh. we're gonna skip ahead. So we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll this, go back and forth. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna this was go insane. in and out. Uh, so our last night, we were trying to get like a, a restaurant booked and couldn't find a reservation everywhere we were getting turned down um, because they, they just don't seat that many people. So you have to either wait a really long time or plan ahead. And, and uh, we didn't really like get sushi, like re- good sushi the whole time. So we really, we, we were like, you know what? Let's just find a good I, sushi I spot. I knew as soon as we came back, everybody's going to be like, how was the sushi out there? I already got asked three times already. How was the sushi? We did prioritize. The trip was only a week long. So we prioritized sightseeing. Sightseeing. Yeah. We were walking all day. And then until it got to, until everything closed, we were like, oh shit, we should probably eat something. eat something. So it was tough to do both. Yeah. So we were like on a hunt for sushi the last night. I was like, I need to get good sushi so I can come back and tell everybody how good it was. (laughs) Couldn't find a sushi place that would take us. So I was like, 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 you know what? I want to try fast food out here to compare it to America to see uh-huh. what the difference would be. So I was like, let's just do McDonald's. We all know what it tastes like. Except for, Except Mariah. for Mariah. I do now, thank you very much. So we go to McDonald's, she has it for the first time. In Japan. 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 How iconic. Uh, like, well. cra- like a-, a few times I just kept looking at Mariah, I'm like, there's just no way you've never had it. <laughs> like, I know, I know, I know, you know, you've never had it, yeah. but how are you I having know. it here for the first I time? I think my parents different. scared me straight. <laughs> how similar was it when you walked in? Did it smell the same? All the, the main, they have quarter pounders and Big Macs. I fe- you know what? It, I felt like it was kind of similar to like a big one in New York, right? I felt like it wasn't any different. It was, it was one where you like order down low and then you go up and there's a whole seating area. Yeah. Um, but. Everything pretty much looked the same, like the staff and all the machines, the ordering process. And the food. Food had totally different items. Uh, so I got a samurai burger. <laughs> um, Wait till you hear what's in it. It was wild. I didn't well, think it would happen. So we, we kind of went hard just because we wanted to try everything. And it was Mariah's um, birthday. Yeah. <laughs> M- McDonald's birthday. Uh, My first birthday. <laughs> I got a spicy chicken um, patty type thing. It was like teriyaki though, no? Well, the other thing that I got <laughs> was a, a teriyaki burger with a piece of cheese. Teriyaki like steak or chicken? It was, it was a burger, but covered oh, in teriyaki, teriyaki sauce. Okay. And then like a slab of Ew, bacon. don't say slab. A slab of like thick cut bacon this big. Then on top of that, it had a hard cooked uh, or uh, over hard egg. So no. Like, like a breakfast egg. Then on top of that was lettuce. And then on top of that was egg salad. So it was like double egg. <laughs> Bro, I got to show you the picture of what this thing looked like. He said it was pretty all good. Respect, all respect, but uh, the egg salad. Why would you put an egg and then you top it off with some egg I don't, I don't know why they doubled up the egg. He doesn't get it. Egg, sal- egg salad is amazing. It's amazing. So I, love egg salad. I gotta say, Honestly, blown away by this burger of how good it was. I expected it to be disgusting, but it was really good. Uh, Samurai was my favorite, though. That was like a bacon cheeseburger with like raw onions on it. And then this like half pretzel uh, roll type thing. Oh, my God. It was banging. Oh, and the staff. Incredible. They are just their uniforms are so clean and yes. put together oh. and they have the hat police uniforms com- compare, security guards yeah compare it to like the employees of mcdonald's here like their <laughs> we, shirts we, like three uh, weeks three yeah. weeks on they, they out here they got their visors <laughs> like this <laughs> <laughs> backwards hats this is oh my this gosh is that's different. really but funny. no it, but like just seeing that difference was insane but yeah they, do you think they come to america and if they if they saw like the way they treat their uniforms, if they're like, wow, they're just so cool and laid back. Probably, really laid yeah. back. Or are they, or are they like? Um, no, I well, I think it's just it's a culture shock for them. So yeah. I just think it's like kind of cool for them. I know that like their cleanliness is bound to their religion, which is like Buddhism and in Shinto, Shinto. And that's a big practice is the value of maintaining a clean space. And yeah. that is like good. 
okay, like, so all respect to like their religious freedom. I wish we could make it normal out here where it is bad luck to be dirty. Like I, I, agree, I agree, bad luck in dirtiness. Like <laughs> bad things will come to you if you're dirty. <laughs> I just wish that, that was normalized. Cause obviously it's a religious thing and we're a very multi-religious. Yeah, but we should be doing it anyway. Why do we want to trash uh, our country? That's why I don't know. It, because I just wish there was a consequence. I know. There is no, the, the idea of just going cleaning. So what? It's just going to be there. I don't care. I I think the littering fee is a myth. I don't know one person who oh, got a ticket I don't, for littering. I've never heard of anybody getting it. <laughs> like the, the, it, it's crazy because there's signs for that everywhere. Every, it's like a three hundred dollar fee. I think those are for tourists. They come oh so clean. Look, I could see them coming here dollars. taking a picture of the littering sign. <laughs> like, oh no, that doesn't happen. And then you know damn well if you did throw something out of your car while driving and got pulled over because a cop saw it and went to write you a littering fine, you'd be like, come on, really? Yeah. And and, and it, you could probably beat it. But the McDonald's was amazing. Yes. And definitely you could Super tell clean. you could tell a difference between the quality out there versus here. The burger had fla like the meat had a seasoning on it. It tasted like Ooh. you could taste that it was like cooked on a grill, like it just had flavor. We brought the wrapper back for Jordan, so he does we, have a wrapper. I, I, I brought it for him, and he opened it up and licked the sauce. That <laughs> no, was, I, I, I'm not Jordan. Jordan. They said that they were just there that morning. <laughs> morning, you told the morning? It, I mean, it was, it was hours before. <laughs> hours before? Yeah, that was yeah before. 12 hours. Technically, he tried it before we did with the time difference. Oh, yeah. We, we oh. flew out at five and landed at 10 in the morning. Okay, that's gonna, I feel like I'm high. Oh my gosh, so and the sauce was probably like all up. Like it's probably. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, okay. But while we're, so. while we're there, so we're sitting there at the table <laughs> and throughout the entire trip, we'll dive into it once we go point by point, but we had gotten laughed at for multiple things like <laughs> whether it be our eating or just silly american stuff but we were getting laughed at and we just saw groups of tables like laughing and we're like oh my god here we go what did we do this time and then we kept seeing people get up and go into the bathroom and then people's reaction were like just absolutely disgusted they would walk into the bathroom and they would come out covering their face like there was laughing. a body in well, there like it was well, so no, no, well, but, no, no. Well, before that, they, it was it was just it was those two groups of girls, yes. right? So they would go in the bathroom and they would they would they would giggle and go back out. And I remember we all looked at each other because we they, because girls were giggling the whole time. So in our head, we're like, oh, the bathroom just probably smells bad. You know, it's like it wouldn't be surprising if the bathroom smelled bad and they're just overreacting because you know they're just giggling. They're but they're it they're was young. The entire oh, <laughs> what happened? oh my god, it's the. <laughs> But it was the entire time we were eating, these girls were giggling, looking at each other. Like everybody was looking at each other. And Zane was the one that was like, is something happening right now? Because like something, something's going down. So I took the reins and I was like, we I like, have to go, go inside this bathroom. And see if, if it's really just like, you know, it smells bad or there's something going on in there. Yeah. So the boys were like, "Go, go look." You had and, and she didn't want to do it. So you, it was oh, because yeah. everybody was looking, and yes. it was like kind of this like weird thing. If you were next, you were going to be the next yes. target. Everybody's All watching the reaction. Yeah. yeah, people were waiting for a reaction, and, and we were like, "Mariah, do it for the podcast. Just go to the bathroom. And whatever and you like, see, whatever you see, take a picture." <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. So what was it? And I, I took the task. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I walked into the bathroom. I don't even want to say it. Just say it. It's we dirty. can say it. It's dirty. It's disgusting. <laughs> Wait, you want us to say it? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we saw the picture. <laughs> she, she ended up taking a picture to show us. <laughs> so this bathroom, pile of shit, <laughs> air smeared all across the wall and big pile of shit on like the ground. Like if somebody were to lean and put their ass up against a wall in explosive. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, this, like, this looks like inhumane. Like a grenade <laughs> went it, off. And she shows the picture. I was like, "How did this happen in the past ten minutes?" It's like, who went in there and exploded? And it didn't even make it in the <sighs> toilet. It was where like you wash your hands, right? Like, so somebody went in there and just <laughs> boom, and just exploded in there. Unreal. Matt, which, was see? which was which was which was crazy to see because everywhere there is clean. So this was very. Let out me take a look at this. Oh! Of <laughs> oh my god! Zane looked at it and he goes. 
I have to zoom in. Like, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I have to zoom in to see no, the pee cocky. Did, yeah, we all did it. We have to. Like, did that, a child do this? That's too much. No, look no. how m- that's a <laughs> lot. A child didn't do that. That's a lot. Someone with like a disability? That No, no that is a fully functional adult. <laughs> Shit. Oh, but then speaking of children, like moms were walking in with their daughters oh. afterwards and watching these kids' reactions. <laughs> It was sad. Oh my! We, we, we honestly could have sat there all night and just looked at people. A reactions. part of us, a part of us wanted to go tell the staff there's like a big fucking pile of shit. But nobody wanted it to look like it was them. <laughs> yeah. That's why oh, 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 nobody was saying anything because they're like, if we go say like somebody did this in the bathroom, they're gonna think it's you. Gotcha. But we also had a lot of fun looking at yeah, all the yeah, faces yeah. going in that bathroom and coming right. I back felt like out. a family. I didn't feel like I had friends that night. Yeah. Because <laughs> they would walk out. We'd see their face, then we'd all look at each other. Oh yeah, I had like a this. moment. There was like these little teenage girls that knew what were going on. And I went in and I walked out and they looked at me and I was like, and they were like, I know. <laughs> oh, they went, oh, they went, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were laughing. Wow. Where, where's that Where's that area where all the lights? Remember all the lights? We were oh, walking like, through that first night. What was, oh, that, what was that place yeah, called? Yeah. Kabuchiko. 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 That was after we got, after we got ramen, we just started like, Oh yeah. Started exploring and that was like our first night, which was so exciting. We got to see all the lights and all the, and everybody was just alive and out. I can't believe how many people were out at all times of the day. And and half the people in tux. Yes. In like black tie tux. Oh yeah, the way people dress there, just everybody looked so crispy. There wasn't a, like if people were wearing a t-shirt, it wasn't even wrinkled. Everything like, like starched pants, like everybody looked so good. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. sucks because I feel like every time we planned a trip, we try to pack nice things, except for this trip, we packed for comfort. I and know. I felt like I was out of place I when it came to did, my style. I thought we did pretty good. Zane, well, everybody no, no, no. was wearing your jackets. Zane packed two jackets, oh, yeah. everyone was wearing <laughs> them. Because, because, and I was like, I was like, Zane, you should be, you should feel like you did the right thing. Yeah, like because like, well, because it was from Uniqlo, which is like the biggest right. store you in did Japan. Good. You did I know, good. That was, that was amazing. I did not know that was a big store in Japan when we went <laughs> yeah. the, the yeah, day yeah, before yeah. we left. Uh, but yeah, Crazy. Everybody, everybody looked so good. And just walking around, like seeing all the lights in person, it was just so bright and vibrant. Yeah. And like just the whole town felt alive. And what was really cool is like, as we're walking around, like taking pictures throughout the city, the like local people were like getting in the pictures and were like and posing smiling and like smiling. Yeah. And it was so weird because normally out here, if you were to, like take a picture on the street, people would like duck or like look away and try to like, yeah. They'd be like you didn't get my permission. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but out there, everybody was like really excited and they would yeah. put up a peace sign. Like, <laughs> especially, so especially I think because knowing that we were tourists, like they, they were like, oh my God, we're going to be yes. in a picture in yeah. America and then you know, in exchange, somewhere else. They would want a picture with us and they were just like, like yeah. they were, we were just so happy to see each they other. Lo- they love getting their pictures taken, which is why we posted a lot of them when we were just posting yeah. in general, because yeah, yeah, they yeah. were actually, they liked it. Every, we, even when we took a picture of them and they weren't looking, after we put our phone down, they were just like, they were smiling, waving at us yeah. and just excited that they were just in this that's, photo. That's the place to do street photography. I'll tell it, you that. Yes. Oh There's so much or stimulation content all in around. general. I was out here, I'm like uncomfortable. I'm. It's still like, if you see somebody taking a picture of themselves, people still stare. I'm, I'm, com- I'm uncomfortable like, filming in, in my house. Right, yeah, same. It's like, <laughs> it's street? still like, it's still embarrassing here for some reason there we were pushing out content because everybody was all for it yeah they yeah. loved it i mean every we were just all filming together it was, yeah, we were, <laughs> yeah we were all we were, we're all, all helping each other's together. channel yeah they knew what we were doing uh but that was really cool there and then we found this area called golden guy oh which gosh. was so cool that was probably one of my favorite parts um in tokyo it's basically like this little section where it's got a bunch of bars and alleys and little restaurants and the bars are literally Tiny. the size of for five people and that's it. Just for like you and your friends just to dominate and they you like yeah. that bar hosts you. Like yeah. the size of Mariah and Matt's section right now, that Tiny. was like, would be a bar. So you don't you don't really get to see exactly what it is. A lot of them is a doorway and it just has stairs going down yeah. or there's stairs going up. I think we walked up. into people's houses. Yeah. Oh yeah. We walked up into one and I was like, ooh, this looks like a cool <laughs> doorway. Let's go see what's up here. We opened the door and it was a guy sitting there <laughs> cooking in front of one person. <laughs> and it, like literally it was <laughs> this big up there. And yeah. the guy's sitting there and he's like serving somebody. And we looked at each other and I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, like, we went up I, there and the guy was like, Hi. I was like, <laughs> so he probably gets it all the time, but he, he's kind of just like whatever to it. Like oh, it was open. truly his house. I don't know if he like lives on top of like his bar or something or yeah. But it, it felt like I walked into 
this guy's the, home. Oh, they were just on break. I don't know what it was, but we ended up finding the really cool dolphin uh, ambiance. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like a dolphin bar. I just like walked in it because there were like Americans that walked out of it. It was cool. It was, yeah, it, right. was our, it was our first drink. Yeah, our, first, yeah. our first little toast. Uh -huh. But that, that guy was nice. He had like the little uh, knife and he was cutting up like a little ice ball. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, he was really friendly because he he kept giving us snacks. Yeah, you oh remember? My God. I found my I found my new favorite snack. Oh, what were they again? They were like Dorito. It was like the puff the Dorito. Dorito. Oh, the three D Dorito. Doritos. Oh my God, they were so good. I was I was a pile. I was like, I was more. knocking I them back. I was knocking them back. I took Dude. A, we took a picture of it. I, I I barely looked at it. I was like, all right, next time we go to Seven Eleven, we're gonna pick up these motherfuckers. We're gonna keep yeah. this shit. Matt, we found them. You did? We found them at a 7-Eleven. We're and like, yes. And you'll never yes. guess what they were. The what? flavor is, I almost about puked in my mouth. What? Spicy cod Ugh. flavor. Exactly. Wait, oh, that's what y'all were eating? Yes. Spicy, Spicy cod, cod chips. I would have never picked that up, but I was but I was eating it all night. And then after I found out the flavor, I took a bite. And I couldn't even, oh, no. I couldn't even swallow it because I like I just knew what they that tasted like cheddar. I didn't get spice. I didn't get cod. <laughs> but it just sucks that once you find out what something is, and that's any food, you find yeah. out something is, you eat it, you like fully indulge. You now yeah. know. Oh, you forget it. I ate the whole bucket at the bar as soon as you said, "Oh, these are the same chips, but they're spicy cod." I was like, I can't do it, it's even like, though I demolished them at the it. bar. But I ate it. Yeah, it's like when you find out. Caesar salad has anchovies, and then you just have anchovies right. in your brain every I time. You love oh, anchovies, I love anchovies. See, I don't though. care as long as I don't want to eat a whole anchovy. I don't yeah. want that whole thing in my. Butt. I bought fried or like the dried out anchovies. I saw that it's disgusting. I did. Ew. I did because you I, you. Do, but do you eat the whole fish like that, or do you eat? Yeah, like you the, eat just the, the no. The, you eat the head to the tail. Oh, but oh. I yeah. It was like Patricia and I we were about to get on the train, and I saw it, and I was like, I got it. Like, there's something like I eat anchovies, like, but I don't eat sardines. Yeah. I eat like the filet of an anchovy, but I, I was like, I just want to try those to see what it's like. The first one honestly wasn't bad. It almost tastes like a fish jerky. Ugh. Like it was just like, uh, it was, and then, and then the second one, I had like a bit of like a crisis where I was like, <laughs> what am I doing? Like, this is disgusting. And then I like, I couldn't like, it but starts you, but off. You, it sounded like you enjoyed it though. Yeah, like it wasn't like I didn't need to throw up. You kind of like, you kind of like gross stuff though. Okay, that's like a loaded like assumption. No, no, no it's I, not gross things. I'm adventurous. Like I don't. I'm not like icky, you're, icky. Yeah, you're icky. willing to try whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think I was like exposed to like a lot of like food uh, like growing up, like to have to experience it and stuff. Me, complete opposite. Unfortunately, what were they just like chicken tendies and PBJs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, because it was all I could eat because um, I, I, could, I could, could only eat halal food. Oh. But now, ooh, give me that shot of tick. <laughs> <laughs> you hold it, hold the boy down. He blooms out, baby. <laughs> Come on, I hit 18 years old, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Do not brag about that. I know, I know, I know. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, Noom. Trends and fads come and go, especially when it comes to health and wellness. But Noom is not a fad. They use psychology, not trends, to help you make intentional and sustainable choices that are aligned with your values and weight loss goals. With their psychology-based approach, Noom empowers you to build more sustainable habits and behaviors. The program helps you understand the science behind your eating choices and why you have cravings. And remember, everybody's journey is different, so your daily lessons are personalized to you and your goals. And whatever your health goals are, the Flexible program focuses on progress instead of perfection. And the best part of all is you can choose your level of support from five-minute daily check-ins to personal coaching. And remember, progress is rarely a straight line and off days are totally okay. Noom will help you get right back on track. And check this, first-time Noomers lose an average of 15 pounds after being active in the program for 16 weeks. And 95% of customers say Noom is a good long-term solution. And Noom's approach is grounded in science. They've published 50 peer-reviewed scientific articles describing their methods and its effectiveness. So stop chasing healthy trends and build sustainable healthy habits with Noom's psychology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash unfiltered. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash unfiltered to sign up for your trial today. And also check out Noom's first ever book, The New Mindset, a deep dive into the psychology of behavior change. Available to buy now whenever books are sold. Thank you so much, Noom, for sponsoring this podcast. We love you. I'm just being honest, you know? 
Do you remember how fun pachinko was? I'm glad we got to try that. Yes. While we were walking so around. pachinko was like one of like uh, uh, Japanese cultures, one of their, I don't want to say their favorite pastime, but it's a big fun game that they like to play. And you see these pachinko places everywhere. I didn't and know that almost, gambling was illegal and that is their form of gambling. Yes, because it's more of like an arcade style, like yeah. form of gambling. So like you go and you put in money, but Pachinko, it looks like a bunch of slot machines, but it's almost, it's like, think of like slot machines in like almost a pinball machine. And it's these little uh, tiny like silver BB orb looking things. And you try to get them to fall in like the middle like slot. It's to like me, one of those old fish games where you got to get the rings yes. on the- to, to me, it was the same energy as that coin game where the coin yes. falls and you watch the coins like oh, push. That, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, it felt like you were sitting there watching, cause that's yes. really addicting. You could sit there all, like for about eight hours and watch those coins fall. Yeah. I felt like that's like their way, their yeah. style. So of. while while you were playing, we were walking around and we found like the little like snack stand and like to go get like drinks and stuff in the back. And we're like sitting there shopping around. We're shop we're, we're, we're picking up stuff. I'm like, oh, this looks nice. Let's grab some of these. And the guy comes over and he's like, you can't have those. And I was like, no, we're gonna we're gonna buy them. And he's like, you can't buy them. And I was like, this is doesn't make any sense. And then come to find out that's only for claiming as a prize. So if you win in Pachinko, you get to go over there. So it's like Dave and Buster's where you take your tickets and your tokens. Yeah, it's like and an arcade. Go, but it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't for winning. toys but it, or for yeah, candy. It was literally like grocery, grocery store. Yeah, it's just little like snack convenience store items that you get as a, it's a, so I was trying to wrap my brain around it. Like why people go and do this. And it's just a fun way to go and pass the time. Yeah, it's a little rush. Yeah. Yeah, but you spent like $50 to walk out with a Red Bull. I didn't spend $50, <laughs> I spent $5. Oh, really? Yes, I only put in like a, a thousand yen. It, it wasn't just a Red Bull. He got little, like a little cracker too, like that rice, little rice cracker thing. I got a Red Bull, and then they gave me like some <laughs> cola gummies and uh, a thing. So I only lost four dollars, but I was able to get like three dollars, or it was like five dollars. Yeah, but it was like the experience, and you got to have fun while doing it. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I and I, and I still the guy who was trying to explain to me the rules. He hardly knew English. I'm trying to vibe with it, but he was like. I'm like, I don't care. Even if I lose money, I just want to know how to play this. But he was so oh, worried. But, but yo, he was beating you though. Like he, he, oh, I remember yeah. he would go, he would get all in. <laughs> okay, now you go. <laughs> Matt wouldn't be able to get any in. It's He's almost like, like it's a, there's like a bit of strategy with like the knob that you're turning and that's the speed of how fast they're getting released. And there's a, a lot of, Shota was saying that there's a lot of probability that goes into it. A lot of people get like addicted to the mm. flow and then the odds of it hitting. Yeah. By People the way, Shoda is Heath's friend. He's from California, but he just moved to Tokyo. Yeah, he moved out there about to to uh, a year Tokyo? ago. Yeah, he moved out there a year ago. Yeah, so he, thank God, there was like a couple days where he showed us, hop, hop on this train, let's go over here. He showed us some little like pockets. Yeah, it was nice to have somebody that uh, spoke Japanese who was a local there yeah. who could show us around and kind of not be a tour guide, but basically be a lifeline for us while we were there. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. It's really cool too that like he didn't really, he didn't speak it in, uh, flu uh, fluently at all before he moved there. And he was able to pick it up in a year. Amazing. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, he's Japanese, but it's still really crazy that right. he was able to pick it up from his brain and just learn right. it fluently yeah. in a year. That was amazing. That's why in my head I was like, can I go to Lebanon for a year and like pick that up fluently? Like pick up Arabic again? Because yeah. I have it in my brain. I used to speak it fluently. You probably I, could. Yeah, I bet you yeah. could. Which is so interesting. I bet to you me. could if you practiced it for a year. You'd yeah. be like, "That's it." Because it's like it's all about like it's all about like recognizing words and recognizing yeah. like. And then after that, we went to our first sushi spot out there. Uh, it was one of those conveyor belt. Uh, experience. Oh, so cool. Sushi Matt, did you, didn't you just like walk in there? Like, did, did you even did you even know where we were going? I had it like on like my, my maps. Like, I had it clocked in as like a potential place we could go to. Got so it. I knew it was there. And then, but I was still uncertain because, like in uh, uh, Tokyo, you'll see a bunch of like places that it's not always on the street. You have to go up an elevator or down an elevator yeah. to find the store. And uh, yeah, we ended up going to a conveyor sushi uh, uh, belt but place. It, just like, it wasn't just like the TikToks. It it's wasn't crazy. like a conveyor belt sushi like I thought it was gonna be. Normally, they just put a bunch of shit out on a conveyor belt and send it. And if you want it, you just pick it off and grab yes. it. Yeah. And this, I think because of COVID, they've like changed up those rules. So it's more like this all one, of that's advertisement. This one was totally different. Like you place the order. First of all, this shit came out in 30 seconds from pressing go. Wild. But it's it, there's one conveyor belt that runs down the whole thing, and then it knows it'll catch a like a, a a turn and shift off and come directly to your table, 
and everybody else's would be going past and then it would break off to each person. And that table. shit was going fast yeah. too. It was like, when it was coming down, it was like, the oh, technology. you better be prepared. Yeah. Or it's gonna, it's gonna land all because over. Because you're completely on your own. You don't have a waitress. Yeah. You start ordering immediately. The food's coming out. Oh, you gotta and when you and when you're sitting at the end of the table, it is your job. It is your duty. Yeah. You're, as, because if that if you're not taking that shit down, that food's yeah. gonna be coming. It's gonna be crashing to your table. And of course, me and Zane were left with the window seat, so it was our responsibility. I thought it'd be cool to be next to it, then I realize, know. oh, and, and I have to now pick up everybody's food. I can't even eat my own food. <laughs> <laughs> but um. It was really fun. My favorite part were the desserts. Oh, we so first of all, we ordered so much. I think I think I had like four drinks. Matt had like four oh, drinks. Oh yeah, we, we had all, to try them. We all. all got so much stuff. A bunch of different sushi, uh, different soups. We got Mariah got a bunch of chicken tenders and French fries. <laughs> um, we got melon pops. Oh we, yeah. I thought this bill was going to be three hundred something dollars. Oh yeah, for sure. There, our, our table we was getting, stacked. We like, got yeah. we got five desserts. First of all, dessert was banging. Yeah, oh it man, was. I, I still it, think about it. It was like a tiramisu with ice cream, and then like this cookie thing on the bottom. Oh, baby, take your time. Um, take your keep, time. keep describing it. Tell me. Tell me what keep it was. Describing it. Um, but our total came out to be a hundred and five dollars. Bananas. Uh, we were we were thro so thrown. reasonable out there. For it throat is bad. We couldn't believe it. And Matt was freaking out because we are, our our because like every drink that we got came in this dish, right? We had to grab the dish and then you take the cup out of the dish. It was a console. It was, like it was a, a whole saucer. console. It was, it was like a saucer, and our 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 stack started getting higher than like our our own like bodies. Where how we're sitting, <laughs> it was like the size and, of a tort. You know, like tortillas when they serve you, yeah, and like that yes, like uh, little just like that. holder. It was like. We had, I swear, 20 of those on our table. And everybody else's tables, none of them had like saucers. Everybody had, was, tables were pretty clean, except for our tables. We were just We had stacked. skyscrapers of plates. And Matt like, was freaking was out that we were doing it all wrong. Cause that, that, Matt was usually the first one to like call anything out. If we, he thinks something, we're doing something wrong, he'll I'm like freak out. I'm just always looking out how, what other people are doing exactly, and which trying to make sure I'm in line with it. Exactly, we need someone like that. We, but then we noticed that there were no waitresses coming by. Like nobody was there to, like to clean out the table and we're like, okay, what are, what are these other tables doing that we're like, we're not doing. And I just don't think we were supposed to order as much many. as we did. <laughs> I know. Like most people got like, well, they had self-serving water. So I'm sure most people just get water and then there was free matcha on the table. Yeah, like I don't think in. anybody really got drinks or sodas. We had the lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we learned very quickly that we, we were ordering too much. Yeah. We learned that from the next restaurant. Oh right? my yeah. God. Yeah. That was, that um, was, that was really a, a an eye-opening experience. <laughs> that that one really like let us know that oh wow we are disgusting. So, <laughs> so we were walking around one day and we were trying to figure out what to eat and we were just like whatever restaurant we pass next we're just gonna go in. So yeah, everyone was down. Cool. We find a restaurant. We're like this is gorgeous. We walked in. It was like a hotel, um, indoor outdoor feel. Beautiful beautiful spot. It felt like the catch LA. Yeah. Of Japan. It was, very, it was definitely fancy. Very Beautiful, pretty. yeah. There was like just pretty girls sitting having tea and and pastries. It was just very sophisticated. So we march in <laughs> <laughs> and we get our table. We all order. We love drinks, right? Yeah. So you have to have the water, the iced coffee, and then your fun the soda. Drink. So we had yeah. yeah, we had like three drinks each, but then we each had a bowl. We ordered a bowl. So well, hold on. When we were ordering, so there's like a d couple different oh, yeah. bowls you could choose <laughs> yeah, yeah, from, yeah. or like a pasta or something. We're going through the line, and then it gets to Zane, and the lady's asking what he wants, and he was like, um, "This one and this one." She was like, "Which which one?" And he was like, "This one and this, <laughs> and this one. one." Both. And she was like, "Which one do you want, though?" <laughs> and then Zane was like, B "Both." And she was like. <laughs> oh, yeah. you it was sure hard about because that? we wanted okay. to we wanted to try multiple it's, things. It's, it's the trying everything. Yeah. That's like what we really want to do because we're out here. We, right. we want to try everything. So um, <laughs> and we're looking around to see if anybody else is eating to see what the food looked like, but everybody just had a tower of these cute little tiny pastries, strawberries, little cakes. And nobody was eating it. The girls sitting next to us were just taking pictures of the food. We were there for like an hour and a half. Yeah. This yeah. was a long lunch. They were taking pictures of the food. They were going live on Instagram. Like nobody was actually taking a bite of their food. So we were like, a part of us were like, is this like, are we not supposed to actually eat? <laughs> <laughs> it's toy food this whole time. Yeah. So That's what it seemed like. we order the food and then we're looking at the menu for dessert. And 
there's three desserts on there, but we were like, we got to try all three. Like there's, there's, there's five of us. We can handle. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot desserts. of us. There was a lot of us. And we realized that none of our plates were being um, taken from us, oh, right? Our right, empty dishes right. or even a, f- a place with a little bit of food left. Right. Everything was still on our table. We had no more room left, right? right. Usually in America, they would clean it up but, over the uh-huh. night. But, but keep in mind, people in this restaurant were looking at us this whole time and kind time. of being yeah, like, like we giggly. Had 10 heads. Like, like, look at how much these people are eating. Like, but, but no, but we did. We honestly didn't know why. No, right? we, they were cracking up. Remember, Zane looked over at my phone and I was Googling. Why? Why is everyone laughing at us? <laughs> <laughs> we're in Japan. Why is everyone laughing at us? And we were really trying to figure it out. And we obviously didn't get a response on I Google because it was just. I think every employee came over to see if everything was okay. <laughs> they had a new person coming in. It was, right. it was like, they went in the back like, yo, you gotta see what this table is. <laughs> it's, like we it's like we like, were being yeah. loud and um, disrespectful. Yes. That's oh, what it I was seemed like. I was like turtling so hard but the entire time. The manager now came over because we had one dessert in front of us already. And he goes, did you order two more desserts to confirm? And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all of them. And he's like, are you sure? And we were like, yeah, like bring it up. We're like, we want to try it. And they're like, okay. So he came over again to confirm, to point at the menu. You want all of these This desserts? was now the manager. Yes. They, they brought over the head of yes. the restaurant just to make sure he <laughs> ordered three and desserts. every time they brought somebody over, we looked behind and everybody in the kitchen was the like, oh staff. my God, the, what what the two ladies did? Oh yeah, so our <gasps> server and then the other lady that was uh, oh, working at the restaurant. Oh, what you saw, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm looking at these two, I'm looking at all the staff because I really, I, we're trying to figure out what it is, right? Yeah. So I see the boy, our server <laughs> and another lady. Our server is looking at us and the other, her friend is looking that way. I'm looking at her her and she she uh, she points at her team she's like <gasps> Woo, just like that uh, she goes she looks at the server looks at her, she goes so then zane shuts down because he's like we're doing something we're doing, we're something, doing something wrong something. so we call handy dandy shoda heat's friend to facetime this manager and i was like can you talk to him and like find out like i was like in not in a weird way but can you find out like what's so funny like why why are we being laughed at so I put him on the phone with like the manager guy and then like they talked for like a little while and then hung up and I, I asked Shota afterwards. I was like, what was he saying? He was like, he said that <laughs> he's never seen anybody order so much food <laughs> and that we ate for 10 people and that were monsters. <laughs> he Literally, said the word monsters. That were monsters. Nothing made me feel more disgusting. <laughs> more American. Than that. Yeah. And that was pretty, like, we didn't even order that much food. <laughs> right. That was crazy. We didn't order that much right. food. The conveyor belt, we we were monsters. Yeah, we yeah. Yeah. But we, this, we all picked one little thing besides Zane's two things, but we also ate I, everything. We I got a, weird. I got a bowl and a dessert. <laughs> no, yeah. But then we, no, look, then we searched Google. We found out that it's disrespectful to leave food on your plate. And we're, well, Fuck, we gotta eat everything. They, right now. they didn't clear our plate until it was empty because they yeah. cleared some of ours. Um, so how they worded it online was that not that it's disrespectful, but it's very unusual to order again. Once yeah. you're not when you're That's not. That's why everybody your meal. had one little strawberry yeah. at their table and that was it. <laughs> like if you ask for something else, they're like what? Yeah, like why would you order more when there's still food on your and, you plate? Know, yes. and, and we felt so bad for ordering so much food, so we wanted to leave a tip, but then you don't, you can't leave right, a tip. It's this whole thing, yeah. <laughs> because we don't want to, yeah, it was just, it it's was a lot. It was so funny. It was so funny. That was probably the most We learned our lesson. There. Yeah, we definitely yeah. learned Truly. our lesson. And then what did we do after that? We ordered a shit ton of McDonald's. We actually stopped caring at one point. We were just like, you know what? We're disgusting. We're disgusting <laughs> and we know it. We're at least not being disrespectful and being loud. Let's just order as much food as we want. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Gonna at least order it in one go. Exactly. Rather than having yeah. it over the course. Because we're also yeah. only there for a week and we want to be able to try everything. Yeah. And that's the thing, Heath. They didn't know we were only there for a week. And I think that if they knew, they wouldn't have laughed so hard. Yeah. I agree. So. Because I think like it was that. a place that wasn't for like tourists. Exactly. Like it was yeah. like for like it locals. It seemed like an Instagram place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was full of all the social catch. media, just pictures, videos. Oh my, can we talk about one more thing before we end this podcast? Yeah. Because we still have so much, but I we know. have to, we have to. It's have hard to, to like stop. Yeah. Somewhere. So we got to, we're going to, we got to move to, uh, we got to um continue on the, on the next episode, but we want to talk about one more thing. So this was one of the, one of the highlights, <laughs> one of the highlights of the whole trip, <laughs> but we were at a train station in Gien 
Ainza, right? Yeah. We were going from one place to one place and we were going through the train station and Patricia had to go <laughs> to the bathroom real quick before yes. we made our way to the train. And she, <laughs> and she, she comes out sweating. She comes out sweating. We're like, what's what's going on? She's like, oh, I just pressed the, I just pressed the button to flush the toilet, and then I and then a bunch of a bunch of um like security, security, security and cops there was, came there was in. Sirens going off. Sirens going off at the train station. <laughs> We're like, what'd you do? She was like, I thought I pressed the flush, but I think I pressed the SOS button right next to the flush. It's a button. big red SOS <laughs> button. It's two big buttons. <laughs> Which I I think it's crazy that she. Looked at SOS and press it. That's, That's just wild. Hysterical. But they take that shit seriously they out were, there. Yeah. They were there in a second. And it was like a man who like opened up the stall. Yeah. She oh, was yeah. In. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 into the stall where she was in. <laughs> wild. That is Imagine so funny. thinking you're going to flush. <laughs> <laughs> you're just so like, Boom. Boom. <laughs> like the Kool Aid man. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. But then again, they are on their shit. It's just like yeah. we keep getting examples of how on top of their shit they are. In America, 35 minutes, SOS button. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, no, it. no, in America, the wires wouldn't be attached. And oh, yeah. just go to another. It would just be a dead button that just doesn't do you anything. You'd be put on hold. Is that crazy? <laughs> oh, man. And that was for if someone like fell in the bathroom? Yeah. Or was that more like yeah. if someone's being attacked in the bathroom? Have you ever anything. been in a hotel room and they have that little string hanging from the wall by the toilet? Oh, I go to like really like like who like two stars. Yeah, no Wait, I've never heard. Yeah, what string? A Wait, string. Look it up. Yeah, I'm you gotta like crazy. you gotta like move the roaches and get to the <laughs> string. What does a string do? They are they are very old. It's like when hotels. when you would go to a hotel and there'd be like a telephone. Yeah, next yeah. to the yeah. toilet. It's like an yeah. emergency. I know there's, that. there's a string for like if you fall like senior citizens, I, I guess. That. SOS yeah. string. I, it, I wouldn't know about that. It looks like a little like curtain pole. Um, oh, Mariah, what are you saying that? <laughs> the examples are just fucking gross. It's all vintage that's photos. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little string. Oh, that's funny. I mean, that's not funny. I mean, that's something you probably you had to do at the time. Which is okay. <laughs> it's okay. That's what it looks like. You've never seen that? <laughs> oh, I've seen that. They had that all over in Lebanon. All right. So. Back then. Good for you. <laughs> back then. <gasps> back then. Back in the hundreds. Back in the olden days. Oh. But yeah, we're like halfway through the Yeah, Japan I don't trip. even think we're halfway. Oh, yeah. Not even. Get ready for part two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm to so tired, oh, guys. No, I, know. I we felt know. like oh, I've been like. Okay. All right. So um, we, happy birthday, Heath. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I hope you had a lovely day. I did. Close us out, birthday right. boy. Make sure to check out our Cremacha starter kit. You can get it uh, at Cremota.com. We got a bunch of different coffee, cake cups, bagged. Uh, we've got espresso. And then you can also check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Zane and Heath. You get early access to all these episodes. You're going to get them ad free. You're also going to get a bonus high episode or drunk episode every single month. We do a live Q&A. We've got a Discord. You guys can hang out, chat with us. And uh, again, patreon.com slash Zane and Heath to check that out. Woo! Um, you can check out this episode every week on Mondays we post the audio form on like podcast app on Spotify on the Google uh, podcasts um, on Mondays audio form I already said that and then on Tuesdays we post a video form on YouTube.com slash Zane and Heath mm. uh, a little so update our ducks are pregnant oh yeah wow. <laughs> we're gonna oh, God. <laughs> we watched them doing it oh yeah they were doing it in, like, like suffocation no yes. breathing yes it was insane i thought she was drowning i jumped in <laughs> they're still in that chlorine water should they be like in some fresh water it's yeah they don't it, matt you should have seen the dick dance after no it was, oh yeah so it was oh dead. boy it that is a power move right there yo mm. both of them both of them got done they separated they went like this they stood up they in levitated the water and went like this <laughs> what and then that was it was it was beautiful. It was magical. <laughs> oh my God. When he comes inside. <laughs> oh, stop. All right, Enough. guys. Yo, All those right. are our kids you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and we also do unwinds on our Patreon. We just keep the camera rolling for an extra like 20, 30 minutes. And it's like an extended version of the podcast. Again, that's on our Patreon uh, if you want to check that out, which we're going to jump into right now. Um, but we love you guys and we'll see you uh, next week. We love you so much. Arigato, 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 arigato